Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie Wong, a developer advocate at Google Cloud. Look, tech has long been an industry where women are underrepresented, but the good news is that's finally changing with cloud. Today, I am going to talk about getting your first cloud job as a woman in tech. While there are fewer women than men getting computer science degrees, it doesn't mean there are fewer women trying to break into cloud. I myself didn't graduate with a CS degree. I graduated with a different kind of CS degree, communication studies, but my minor introduced me to tech and I fell in love. Luckily with cloud came a culture shift. The cloud world is collaborative and flexible. The core foundations that have become synonymous with cloud, like the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, are predicated on a culture of knowledge sharing, diverse perspectives, and open source contributions. As a woman in tech, use your unique voice, skills, and influence to blaze a path in cloud. So let's dive into key strategies to get your first job. Let me just first say that these strategies apply to anyone trying to get a job in cloud. But I wanna frame this for women as we might experience added obstacles because we don't see or know many other women in the industry. First, don't let myths stall your career. As you embark on your cloud journey, remember that it's often companies that fail to retain great women, not women who fail to cut it at great companies. For example, there is a myth that the cloud world is driven by men with CS degrees. Well, we still have a lot of work to do to close the gender gap in tech. The cloud computing space is challenging the narrative. Because cloud is a relatively new technology, there are more opportunities and the landscape is actually more diverse with a range of personalities. Just look at Melody McFessel, a former VP of engineering at Google Cloud, or Aparna Sinha, director of product management at Google Cloud. The list goes on. If you have an interest in cloud, learn, collaborate, and just go for it. Focus on a specialization. There's a long-standing debate whether you should go deep in one area or broad when it comes to cloud, because there are endless areas to learn about. Infrastructure, security, microservices, networking, API management, and more. But becoming a leader in the ever-evolving cloud market is all about specialization, visibility, and experience. Because the cloud industry is so vast, deference is given to the thought leaders of their respective fields. But don't let it hinder your start in cloud. When I first started in tech, I consumed up everything I could about the cloud and how each piece fit together. VMs, databases, networking, and developer tooling. I enjoy seeing the big picture. And as such, I consider myself a cloud generalist, knowing a little bit about everything while still being able to go deeper in certain areas like networking. I then mastered the art of presenting a range of cloud topics across mediums like videos, podcasts, and talks. I guess you could say I specialized in becoming a generalist distilling complex topics and educating through online content. So don't feel like specialization means that you need to color inside the lines. Number three, build a support system. With a shortage of women representation, self-doubt can swoop in. You need to find and create a system of people who have traveled the same journey you're navigating. There are so many organizations and networks created for women to come together to help women get jobs in cloud, learn and network. Some of my favorites include Women Tech Makers, Anita-B.org, Built by Girls, Women in Cloud, and your school or company Cloud Women's Groups. And if you don't have one, consider starting one. And check out other cloud forums like Google Cloud Innovators, A Cloud Guru, and hundreds of meetups around the world on meetup.com. Networking does sound cliche, but it's really about building relationships and finding people who can become your biggest champions. And that leads me to number four, Find a good mentor. I firsthandedly know how powerful a mentor can be. Not only have I had incredible mentors throughout my career, but in 2020, I met one of my mentees through the UCLA mentorship program. She also had a BA in communication studies and wanted to find someone in a technical role who had a different background like herself. So it was a perfect match. But it was also very hard in 2020 for her to find a job during the pandemic. I helped coach her and showed her resources, lesser known boot camps, and introduced her to my network until she was able to secure a job in the tech industry. So find a mentor program through your own networks or organizations like Anita B. You can also use social media to meet cloud professionals. But before you ask them to be your mentor, remember that finding a good mentor can't be transactional. I recently interviewed a leader at Google and she described it as building your own board of advisors where each person is invested in your future. 
For them to be invested, they need to care about you. And that takes relationship building. Find areas of overlap and take the time to nurture that relationship. Offer your skills so they see your potential and want to see you succeed. Number five, don't let self-doubt get in the way. It can be scary to work in an industry where you may be the only woman in the room or on a project, and you might question if you even belong there. Many of us believe that there tends to be little room for error for women. We might get penalized for making small mistakes, and this can lead to us walking on eggshells or overanalyzing our qualifications for a role and that gut-wrenching feeling of imposter syndrome. When I landed my first cloud job, I had to learn everything on the job. When I joined Google, I even felt more imposter syndrome comparing myself to the engineers around me. But each time I made big moves into cloud computing, I realized after 12 months, my self-doubt would subside and my confidence grew as I gained more experience. So do not let self-doubt get in the way of picking up new concepts and having a voracious appetite to learn. It just might take a little bit of time, so be patient. Number six, stay authentic. If there's anything that I learned along my journey, it's that staying true to myself and my interests outside of work will lead to better job fit and happiness later on. I was never shy about my dance or pageant background. And in fact, those are the things that helped me excel in cloud because they gave me the confidence to present and tell stories. Then I was able to land on a role that let me hone both my technical and my communication skills, which is why you're watching me in this video today. So never let the stereotypes of the tech industry sway your career choices. Whether it's coincidental or not, the rise of cloud was accompanied by a significant drive to recognize and support women in cloud. The culture of the cloud industry is very welcoming and cloud as a technology is often credited as democratizing the resources needed for women to take their place as professionals and entrepreneurs. So in summary, don't let myths stall your career, focus on a specialization, build a support system, find a good mentor, don't let self-doubt get in the way, and stay authentic. Best of luck in your own journey, like and subscribe to our channel. We will be back with more advice on how you can crack your cloud career.